Very nice, Deborah. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Lester Memorial United Methodist Church on a beautiful All Saints Sunday. And uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to look at the setting, it's absolutely gorgeous, Dana. I think you did some work on that, but very, very pretty. Good to see each of you here this morning, especially those of you who may be visiting with us. We hope that your visit will be pleasant and uh, you want to come back. I've got some announcements I want to share with you this morning. But before I do, I want to say good morning to our radio and live stream congregation. It's nice to have you worshiping with us this morning and hope things are going your way. Uh, I think I've said this once before when somebody says something about the thermostat or the temperature or whatever, but it make a good country western song when you say, is it cold in here or is it just you? <laughs> and, uh, but I think we've got the temperature adjusted now and hope things are, are comfortable for you. So uh, anyway, uh, poinsettias, uh, the deadline for ordering the poinsettias is Wednesday, November 13th. You have an insert in your bulletin, so please hang on to that and uh, get your order in as soon as you can. Sunday, November 17th will be the Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Packing Party in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, there'll be a Lunch will be provided at 11.45, and it's for families and children, and the goal this year is to pack 200 shoeboxes, and hopefully that'll be done, and we'll be out of there by about 2 o'clock. Uh, this afternoon at 1 o'clock, the Safe Sanctuary Training for Children and Youth Volunteers will be in the fellowship hall, so that's important that uh, those of you who have children who are involved in that <clears throat> will, will attend that meeting. Monday night is Celebrate Recovery uh, in the Fellowship Hall at 545. Tuesday, a place at the table, Main Street Coffee House at 630, and the prayer break, breakfast for the students in the Fellowship Hall Friday morning at 7. I think that's got all my announcements. Uh, I'd ask you to sign the attendance pads at one end of the pew or the other, the black pad, visitors and members alike, so we can record your attendance with us and uh, keep you up to speed on what's happening. Glad you're here this morning. May God truly bless us this hour. Thank you. team is 711 for all the saints. Let's stand and sing. 711.
The Apostles' Creed is found in your bulletin. Please join with me as we affirm our belief as Christians. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. Let me welcome you as well this morning. I'm Pastor Harvey Beck and on behalf of Old Church, we again are delighted that you're here. If you're visiting with us, we're glad you came. We know that today is All Saints Sunday and I, I'm thankful we are part of a tradition that uh, honors All Saints Day. You know, John Wesley said it was one of his favorite services and uh, it has become one of mine too. I truly think it's important that we remember those who have gone on before and so we're going to do that this morning. And uh, you'll be given an opportunity if you're here, if we notified you and let you know that your loved one who was a member of our church had passed away, you'll be able to come and light a candle. And I'll explain that in just a moment, a little more detail. But if you're visiting, we're glad that you're here. Please add Sherry Lynn uh, Rogers to our prayer list. She was, had to be taken to the hospital last night. She has been released, but uh, late last night to Grandview. I appreciate Joe, Pastor Joe Hastings. Uh, checking on them and going down and seeing them, but she is back home in the wee hours of the morning. We continue to pray for her and just add her to the list. So please take time to look at those that are there. We've all got folks that we love and care about, and uh, perhaps by raising your hand, maybe you've got somebody on your heart and mind, or maybe a burden, burden of intercession to pray for somebody, but you've got somebody on your heart and mind this morning, just lift your hand up. I know many, many of us do. There's usually a a list that the Holy Spirit has inside of us that we're to intercede for. Anytime you want to come down and join me with prayer at this time, I welcome you to come, whether it's to pray for one of those, or maybe you need to pray for yourself, or maybe you just need to come tell God, hey, good morning, God, I'm glad I'm here. This altar is always open, so you come if you wish, and join with me now as we go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we bless you today, and we love you today, and we praise you today. Thank you, God. That this special Sunday that we call All Saints Day, and we're joining all over the world, many, many churches that remember this day. As we reflect back over this past year, and, and some of us here this morning have, have lost some loved ones, me included, Lan and I. And, and so, God, we, we pause and we remember them, and we just want to be grateful and thankful, God, for their lives. And so I know there are many that feel that expression this morning, and so we praise you for that, and we thank you, God, for that. A special grace that flows. Lord, our, our emotions are high for those of us who do remember. And, and even if it's been 10 years ago or 20 years ago, a lot of times this day just helps us to reflect that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. And God, we know that's in your word. I don't fully understand everything about that. But I know over and over you talk about heaven. And again, I've got all kinds of questions. But as the song says, you know, we can only imagine what it will be like our loved ones that come before Christ, and then we do too. What, what's that going to be exactly like? But I thank you, God, that we may grieve, but we are not people without hope because of Jesus Christ. And so we praise you this morning. Thank you, God. So bless Holy Spirit. Just come and minister to us in this day. And the power also of us celebrating communion together. Just bless this table. Thank you, God, for the bread and the wine that remind us that the body and the blood of Jesus Christ was given for us. And so we praise you and we glorify you. Holy Spirit, again, you come and you minister to us at this table in a way that only you can. God, you saw us lift our hands a while ago. All of us have got a prayer list. 
in our hearts and minds. I even keep one in my wallet, God, that you've called me to intercede for. And, and so I, I pray, God, right now you'll receive our, our prayers of those we feel an unction, an urgency, or a need to pray for. Remind us of the beauty and the power of praying for somebody else. It not only connects us with them, but it connects them with God and then God to us. It's a powerful, powerful, powerful thing that God has blessed us with, this thing called prayer. So we love you and praise you and right now, in our own way, in our own mind right now. Just whoever you're thinking about, just bring that name before the throne. So many names right now being brought before the throne of grace. Maybe it's for salvation. Maybe it's for strength. Maybe it's for courage. Maybe it's that someone will find the loving, forgiving God. Whoever we're thinking about, God, maybe it's for healing. I thank you, God, that you've instructed us in your word to pray for one another that you may be healed. We certainly don't understand everything about healing, but we certainly can pray for it. So we thank you, God, for that. And we ask you to bless and touch all whom we're thinking about right now. In the name of Jesus, we are allowed to have the authority to pray in his name. Thank you, God. Praise you, God. I thank you, God, for each person that's here this morning. Uh, perhaps we chose to come because of All Saints Day, and I ask you to bless those who are there for that purpose. But all of us, we've made a choice. we made a decision to come to the house of the Lord. As Joshua said, for me and my house, we're going to choose to serve the Lord. And so, God, we, we chose. So I ask you to bless each person who's here this morning. For whatever reason, God, that you'll just touch us today and remind us that you are a loving, holy, and righteous, and glorious God. So come, Holy Spirit, come and minister to all of us here. Bless this service. It's yours. You are why we have come. May you be glorified in it all. And now, church family, join with me as Jesus taught his disciples, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Our second hymn is number 368, My Hope is Built.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask that you use these tithes and offerings and all that we have for the building up of your work in this church and the wider world for your glory. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Some of you are like me. I love the changing of the colors and so forth and the seasons. I'm usually ready for it to change into the next one when the next one gets here, but I still like the changes. And uh, we've had three good hard frosts. I announced this this morning. You know that after we've had a good frost, you can go squirrel hunting now. I was raised that way, told if we have a good frost and we go squirrel hunting. That has nothing to do with the sermon, but if you want to go squirrel hunting, you let me know. I mentioned earlier that today is All Saints Day, and of course it's Holy Communion, and I, I think it's neat that we do all these together. This is kind of going to be our plan. I'm going, to, I'm going to share from God's Word a brief sermon this morning, and then we'll lead right into our time of lighting of the candle. You know that the names of those that we've lost, members of our church that we have, and we apologize if we've left someone out, so let us know that. I'll be glad to announce them, but we have 13, so we have 13 candles that will be lit. If you're here and you're a family member, you're more than welcome to come forward, I light a candle on behalf of them. There are some family members that are not here. We tried to get a hold of all of them, but if there's not, Dana then will just light a candle on behalf of that family member. But if you're here this morning when that name is called, you just come forward, light that candle. After all 13 of those are lit, then we will give those, if you've lost a loved one over this past year, you may come, if you wish, to come and light a candle on their behalf. Again, Dana will be here to help guide us as we light the smaller candles. Just like Lana and I will come and light one for Dave. But if you want to come and do that, will there be a moment for that? As soon as we light those candles, then we will just flow right into communion. We won't have formal liturgy this morning. In a moment when I pray, I'll ask God's blessing and anointing again on the table. But then we'll just enter right into that. I'll ask Tommy to come forward right after we do the candles. He and I then will share in communion. We'll invite you to come. So that will be our process as we flow through this right now. I said earlier that John Wesley loved, and he did. He wrote in his journals as he got older in life, and I too, as I get older, I see the value and the, the, the power in it, the importance in it. And so today's sermon, we'll reflect on that. The sermon title is, Let Us Go Join Them. Let Us Go Join Them. That comes from a title from a song a hymn that was written by Charles Wesley, and I'll read a couple of those verses in a moment. But let us go join them. What I want to do is begin to talk about the book of Job. Now, most of you probably have read that book, and maybe if you haven't recently, I'm going to give a short story, but if you've never read Job, I'm going to give you enough information, you'll know where we're going with the book of Job. And uh, as far as we know, it is one of the oldest, if not the oldest, book written. Some scholars disagree on that, but nonetheless, it's, it's pretty old. But the thing about Job, as I've read it a bunch through my life, and of course re-reading, and I'm going to share a verse in just a moment, but sooner or later, when you walk on this life and you journey long enough, you can write your own book of Job. Because some of the same things that he wrestles with, it's the same thing every generation wrestles, wrestles with on their journey. And I wrestle with. Um, so let's just talk about the book as a whole. And then we're going to narrow it down and, and, and just try to help work through our struggles. So the book of Job, here's a short version of it. Job's name comes up in a spirit world meeting. God's there. Satan's there. Demons, good angels, the Trinity are there. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's a meeting in the spirit world. And lo and behold, God brags on Job. And so Job na Job's name comes up. And Satan says, well, let me have a crack at him. Now, it doesn't read that way in the Bible, but that's my version of it. But Satan asks for it. Let me have him. Suddenly, you read in the first few chapters, you can read all of this. Job is given four reports that come pretty quick. Now, Job was a righteous man. A godly man, and he, he was very wealthy. God had blessed him uh, with a lot of land. And he had, he had all kinds of livestock. Because in that day and time, if you owned a lot of cattle and goats and sheep, and you were very wealthy, he had many employees, many servants. But within a few reports, he was informed that all of his livestock, all his materialism had been taken away. He also was informed that all of his employees, all of his servants, many whom he was very close to, Lives had been taken or either they had been taken out into slavery. And then he was given the information that his ten children, all ten children died 
And it was due to either thieving intruders or either natural disasters. Something that we still to this day wonder about those who are wicked and evil and why they get away with it. And then lo and behold, calamity comes and there is some tornado that hits, misses the evil one over here and, and hits the most godly saint we've ever known. And we wrestle with that. Well, here, here Job was with ten children are dead. Everything's gone. Job is so distraught. He rips his clothes and he, he shaves his head in sorrow, but yet he still praises God in his prayers. There's another spirit world meeting and Satan is at the meeting place again, which theologically I still wrestle with. God allows him another opportunity to test Job. This time, Job is distressed with terrible medical news. He has sores all over his body. More than likely, he had leprosy. Uh, skin sores all over him. He was in horrible pain. He was suffering. His wife, his wife just says, why don't you just denounce God and go ahead and give up and die? But Job protests. He says, no, I'm not. Trying to endure his inflictions and his suffering. Then we have three of Job's companions. Their names are Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. They arrive to comfort him, sitting with Job in silence, which sometimes is the best thing you can do for somebody who's suffering or hurting. You just shut up. So they sit there in silence and for seven days, it says, out of reverence for his grieving, but then they just have to let him know how wise they are. And so the rest of the book is just a dialogue between Job and these three friends and their conversations, but then there's those conversations that dialogue he has with God and he's frustrated and he, and he hits the floor as I've done in a children's hospital and crawled out, why? Well, why? So there's this dialogue that goes on in all of the book. And so here are these three friends and they speak up and, and all of us, all of us, have been Job probably somewhere in this story. But we've also been those three friends, if we're honest. And I encourage you, if you read the book, be honest and realize you probably have been those friends because this is the reason why. When we are not the one suffering, when we are not the one suffering, we can give a lot of advice to the one who is. I've been a time to say amen or oh me. I don't know which one. A.D. and Sarah Powell. That's my grandmother and granddaddy on my mama's side. My mama was the Powell. Everybody called granddaddy A.D. because his name was Adolphus Dahlgren. They called him A.D. Granny's name was Sarah, Sarah Powell. Granny was usually the quieter one and, because granddaddy was always wide, up, wide open and boisterous. And, uh, but granny had a way of teaching you things. And I want to share a story with you. And I, I can't remember if I've shared this before or not. I was probably around 11. And I was alone. There were other grandkids, but I was with Granny and Granddaddy. And I was going to get the delight of going to the funeral home with the two of them. And at 11 years old, you know, that's just exciting. And, uh, but m Grandmother used it as a teaching moment, and I'm going to paraphrase it, but I remember it. I remember it. Because she began to describe to me kind of what's going to happen. And we're going to get there. And there's going to be a casket up front, and it'll be open casket, and so they'll be there, and there'll be people going to be crying and stuff, and there'll be a long line, we're going to get in that line. And she said, there'd be a lot of people who'll be talking to the people that are there by the, the, the casket. And they're going to tell them some things. But um, I have found, Harvey, that the best thing to just tell people is this. Well, I'm listening. Because she said there's going to be some advice given. And by, by the way, some bad advice is a lot of times given at the casket. The friends. I'm, I'm serious. Really. But Yes. And so I'm, I'm observing all this, and I'm ready to go in line. I'm following Granny, and Granny told me. She said, best thing to tell them is, this was one of her friends. I think the spouse had died. She said, the best thing to do is just tell them, I'm so sorry. Express love to them. And Granny hugged them. And I'm watching all this. And then she said, we'll be praying for you. And she moved on. She said, that's the best way to handle it. And I observed it. That was how she handled it. And sometimes that's true when someone's going through suffering. Sometimes it's best to just express love to them. Hug them. 
and just say, I'm so sorry. Because we know, we know that by next week it could be us. There's a book, I don't think I mentioned this in the early service, but Dr. Ellsworth Callis, he wrote a book, if, if experience is such a great teacher, why do I keep repeating the same course? Great title. The titles are worth the book. But he wrote 12 chapters, or really 12 sermons that Dr. Callis preached. He's passed away now, but I got to hear him preach many times at Asbury. And anyway, the chapter, one of the chapters is, I think it's chapter 3, don't seek pain. Don't seek pain. But if it comes, embrace it. Embrace it. Pain, pain is a great equalizer. Uh, pain treats us all the same. So I think that's why he says, don't seek pain, but if it comes, embrace it. Think about it for a moment. The psalmist even tells us in Psalms 119, in the midst of that pain, if you get through it, most of us could testify we get through it and go, man, I sure did learn a lot. You gain some things. It may be humility. It may just be that God is sovereign and you realize you're not. But it can teach us some things. Later in the book, I'm going back to Job. Job is overcome by the presence of God. Job, all of a sudden, he recognizes God's infinite power, but this is important to learn in pain. Job accepts the constraints, the limitations, of his human understanding. And I've had to come to that place. Many of you had to. You, you realize your limitations. It doesn't mean you're not frustrated still sometimes, but you realize your limitations of his understanding. This response seems to please God, and, but God's upset with old Elphaz and Beldad and Zophar for emitting some lousy advice. But Job reconciles on their behalf. God, they're just jerks like I am. Again, I'm paraphrasing. He didn't exactly say it that way. But God forgive them. I still love them. And so God forgives them. God then restores Job's health, granting him twice as much property as he had before, new children, and a remarkably long life. In the end, in the end, Job never he never completely gave up hope or faith in God as inspiration to everyone enduring suffering of their own. So I encourage you to read the book. Here are two things that I wrote down, and one I've already said, but I'm going to say it in another way. Two things that I think are important to learn from the book of Job. Humans, we humans, lack the perspective to assess correctly. We humans lack the perspective to assess correctly God's way of managing the world. We've been there. I've, I've been there. I, there's been a time or two, I was a little arrogant, but there's been a time or two I, I thought I could have given God some advice on could we have done this a different way. So I'm there, I've, I have a book of Job in my life. You do too. So humans... We lack the perspective to assess correctly God's way of managing the world. The second thing is this. This is important. The highest meaning, the highest meaning for any human is found in a personal encounter with God. So we learn from Job that he encountered God and God wants us to encounter Him in this journey. Don't miss that encounter. So here's a passage that I want to give us today. It'll be on the screen above me and this is what Job said. This is kind of his thinking, his assessment. Job 19, verse 23 through 26. Verse 23, Oh, that my words were written, Job said. Oh, that they are inscribed in a book. That they were engraved on a rock with iron pen and lead forever. And then you'll see verse 25 on the screen. I want you to say it out loud with me if you can see it. Can you, can you read that? Yeah, you can. Let's say it together. For I know that my Redeemer lives and He shall stand at last on the earth. I believe it was prophesied. It's capital R in most translations. He said, I know. 
I know my Redeemer lives. And he shall stand at last on the earth. And so Jesus did. Jesus came down here and Jesus understands what it feels like to lose a friend. He, he understands pain. He lost his earthly stepfather and somewhere in the story. And so he understands. He knows what it feels like to stump your toe on the coffee table. He knows. I know my Redeemer lives. And I know that He'll stand on this earth. And then look at verse 26. He's honest. And Job says, And after my skin is destroyed, this I know that in my flesh I shall see God. He accepts His immortality. But knows I'm going to be up there one day. And so he ends in verse 27. He said, Whom I shall see he said, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. Oh, how my heart yearns within me. I preached Granddaddy and Granny and A.D. Powell's funeral, my grandparents, and I'm about to mention my grandmother Beck, and I was able to say at all three of their funerals, I will see them again. I don't understand that completely. I've got questions like you got, but I... Claim that in my flesh I shall see God and, and my eyes shall behold how my heart yearns within me. I want to go to Hebrews, the 12th chapter in the New Testament. This passage is probably the most read at an all saint service than any other scripture, but it just works. So here it is, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore we also, since we are, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run. Let's run with endurance the race that is set before us. Because we got, to, we got to go on. Yes, we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, but we've got to run. We've got to run this race of endurance. Verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of, of our faith. That's good advice. That makes sense. We've got to endure. We've got to go on. But yet, in doing so, you need to look to Jesus. I need to look to Jesus because He's the author and He's the finisher of your faith. You've got to look to Him. Who for the joy, that is Jesus, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Y'all know I quote my grandmother Beck. In fact, the staff hears this week in and week out, but it is part of my DNA. It's a part of my life. And Hebrews 12, I believe, translates into what my grandmother Beck says. And that is, son, you got to keep on keeping on. I say that a lot. Y'all going to hear me say it. I say it in... It's, it's all in the Bible, and this is one of the places it's at. We've got to endure the race. We've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. We've got to keep on keeping on. And we do. And I think Job, that's what he said. We don't understand everything now, but we've got to keep on keeping on. The title of the sermon was, Come, Let Us Go Join Them. I got that from Charles Wesley. So I'm going to close with two verses from the hymn, and the title of the hymn, it's in your hymn book. But come let us join our friends above. Charles Wesley wrote thousands of hymns. And he wrote this back in the 1700s. Come let us join our friends above. So here's verse 1 and verse 3. Come let us join our friends above who have obtained the prize. And on the eagle wings of love to joys celestial rise. Let saints on earth unite to sing with those to glory gone. For all the servants of our King in earth and heaven are one. Verse 3, 10,000 to their endless home this solemn moment fly, and we are to the margin come, and we expect to die. Even now, by faith, we join our hands with those that went before and greet the blood-besprinkled bands on the eternal Sure. As Paul said, yes, we grieve. We grieve. But not with people without hope. Let's pray together. 
God of us all, God of us all, your love never ends. And when all else fails, you still are God. Be with us all in this day and forever. Give us strength, give us courage, and give us faith to proclaim, I know my Redeemer lives. And everyone said, Amen. We're going to begin now to call out the names. I'll ask Dana to come again. If you are a family member when I call out this name, um, I welcome you to come. And I think I left my bulletin somewhere. Hand me a bulletin. Thank you, sir. You'll see the names there in the bulletin. I'll call out that family member. If you're here and you want to come up, we'll light a candle. A uh, bell will chime, and we'll go through those. If there's no one here, and if you want to come up, you certainly can. Dana will just pause a second or two, and if no one comes, she'll light that candle. But you come, and then when we call out all 13 names, then we'll give those an opportunity to want to come and light a candle if you've lost a loved one this past year. Betty Sneed. Ann Vaughn. Sue Wilson. Pamela Hartley. Kate Mitchell. Billy Cheney. Martha Bynum. Willie Hunt. Sarah Vaughn. Charles Hendricks. Derlin Millwood. Patsy Hendricks. Gary Reed.
Now we'll ask if you've lost a loved one over this past year, uh, you're welcome to come. Lana and I are going to come and light a candle as we remember our son Dave. But you're welcome to come at this time. If we sort of bottleneck up, that's fine. Dana will help us find the candle and we'll light those. So you may come now. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Let perpetual light shine upon them and help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, not made with hands but eternal in the heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now you're invited to his table. I'll ask Tommy to come now and he and I will serve each other and then the ushers will guide you as you make your way uh, to come and share in Holy Communion. I remind you that we have an open communion in United Methodist Church and uh, you're welcome to come and we invite you to come and be a part of communion this morning. Um, we do have gluten-free bread. If you need that, just let let us know that, and Tommy and I will serve you with gluten-free bread. Tommy, the body of Christ, given to you. And the blood of Christ, given to you. 
invite you to come to the altar. Go forth now in His grace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus. Amen.
go forth now in the grace and in the love of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Amen. Go forth now in the love and in the grace of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. Amen. and go in peace and may the peace of Christ go with you. Amen. Go forth now in the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
stand together. Praise the Lord, what a great day. We're glad that you made your way to our church today. We hope to see you again soon. Uh, go forth in the love and in the power of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.